in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I took this waterfall image and I made it look like this. Now, um, the tools I used in this was UFRAW and GIMP. Uh, I also had taken more than one version of this photo using a tripod and my uh, raw shooting camera. For more information about some of the tools that I highly recommend that you should be using if you're um, into photography, especially if you're into photo editing, um, check out the link in this okay, blog post. So one of the biggest challenges with um, taking a photo is oftentimes it's hard to choose what settings are right for your picture. Um, for in this example, I've got a waterfall here. Now, for the best exposure to be able to get the details on the underside of the rock and be able to keep my ISO setting at the lowest setting so there isn't a lot of noise in my photo, I had to sacrifice my shutter speed in order to uh, get a good exposure on everything else in the photo. Now, unfortunately, since the waterfall is moving pretty fast, the entire waterfall looks just like a blur. Now, although this is cool, it's not always the most desired result. Now, in the next picture here, you'll see uh, the shutter speed is much faster because I was able to actually get the water looking like it's to, uh, sitting still a little better. The problem is, whenever I took this picture, in order to get this to expose, I had to turn my ISO up higher. And if you know much about photography, you know that the higher your ISO setting, the more noise your photo is going to have. Um, chances are, with the quality of this recording, you probably can't really tell but the underside of this rock especially and other parts of the photo are just very noisy and it just doesn't look good compared to this but the waterfall itself looks pretty nice so what we're going to do is we're going to combine this photo and the waterfall from this photo using GIMP and UFRAW so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the uh, base photo is what I like to call it, which is the first image of the two that we're going to use for the, mo the majority of this image. And I'm just going to make some tweaks in UFRAW to the overall exposure of this photo. Um, first off, I'm going to turn my curve up a little bit because this photo is pretty underexposed. Um, I think that looks pretty nice. Now, I'm trying to just get the majority of this photo exposed properly. I'm not really worried about the waterfall since we're going to be replacing that anyway. Also, the underside of this rock, I'm not really that worried about it either because I can just mix in another version that's lighter. So for now, we're just going to use this as the base and click on Wilbur and he's going to export it out into GIMP. We'll minimize that. There we go. Okay, so now zoom to extents. That looks pretty nice. Um, except for, like I said, the underside of my rock is a little underexposed, and I'd like to see a little bit more color come out of this water at the bottom. Because in reality, this this water at the bed here was very, it was blue. It was very, very strange, really. So we'll go ahead and uh, start exposing the underside of this rock, and then also expose this water bed. And next up, we will also add the waterfall. This time, we're going to open up the other version of this photo, the one that I took with the faster shutter speed at the sacrifice of my ISO. And man, that really looks bad, but the again, the uh, waterfall itself has a pretty good exposure. So we're going to lighten it up and try to get it approximately where it is on the other photo. And uh, we'll try that out and see how it looks. So click on Wilbur. He's going to export that photo out. I'm going to click select Actually, I'm going to try clicking Edit Copy Visible instead of doing that Select All. And then click Edit Paste. Right click and click New Layer. Oh, I made a mistake. See, there's this thing where if you try to paste a uh, layer or a new image on a layer mask, it'll do it wrong. You have to make sure that you're actually clicked on your image whenever you hit Paste. Now right click and click New Layer. So now you see we have a waterfall. It's not blurry. So all we're going to do is we're going to isolate that waterfall by right clicking on it and clicking add layer mask. Set it to black and click add. Now this is kind of cool. Whenever you switch over to the color white and you're using your soft brush, as you brush you're literally going to brush the uh, the waterfall in. Just take your time just go in short brush strokes. Now 
Here we go. So here's the before, and here's the after. If you really wanted to, you could also move the waterfall up a little bit so it's aligned a little better with the other one, but I don't think that's really all that necessary in this case. So that's that. Now the final step, I'm going to increase the uh, saturation of the water bed here a little bit. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and open up the first image we worked with before in UF Raw. And here you're going to get the image again. We'll just adjust that curve down somewhere along there. And I'm going to go over to my, I believe it's in my saturation, yeah. And I'm going to just turn this up. I don't know how far, probably 80 at the most. And again, I'm ignoring the saturation of the green leaves and everything else in the image. The only part I'm worried about is that water bed. We're just trying to make that look more saturated, but not too much. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So, again, all I did was I clicked on my correct luminosity tab, and I adjusted the saturation up. And now I'm just going to click on Wilbur. He's going to export it out into GIMP. I'm going to click Edit, Copy Visible, switch over to my base image, and click Edit Paste, and right click, click New Layer. So now I have this really saturated version of my base image that looks really nice at the waterbed, but everything else looks kind of unrealistic. So we're going to right click on it and click Add Layer Mask, set it to black, click Add. Now get our paintbrush tool out, set it to white, and scale it up a bit. Not quite that much, but use your brackets to you know figure out a size that works and just kind of rough in that that base. Now notice that I kind of messed up my waterfall in the process of doing this, and that's okay because I think this is going to look better if I move this underneath. Yeah. So what I did here is I actually moved my saturated layer underneath my waterfall layer. See, there's the waterfall, and there's the saturation. And all I did was I clicked on this arrow right here and it moved the selected layer down. So if I do a zoom to extents, there it is. There's the final result. Um, in case you hadn't seen it, or in case you forget, that's the original. And that's the final. So um, I hope this helps. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, like I said, there is a subscription over to the right side where you can subscribe to my blog via email and the nice thing about that is it creates an open form of communication between you and me and uh, you can ask me questions directly and I will happily respond to them and give you the best amount of information I possibly can. Hope this helps. Enjoy!